Fuck yeah, big dogs. This is fucking Mucho Drums from Great Electric Quest. You're listening to Doom Tomb Podcast. All you guys fucking get out there and fucking get some. And welcome to the Doom Tomb Podcast. My name is Chris. I am your host. Today we have part two of our interview with the band Stone Witch. And, uh, you know, we go track by track over their latest release, Desert Oracle. We also talk a little bit about gear. We talk a little bit about tattoos, some movies, some, even some Howard Stern talk. Uh, I know this is going to be a long one, so let's just get into it right now. This is part two with Stone Witch. (laughs) JR, all right. Yeah. So you are spot on, by the way. Spot on. I, I don't. I'm spot on, sir. Spot on. No, no, no. <laughs> um, you got me. All right. So you got my number. For you're sure. you're a, a tattoo artist. Yes. How'd nice. you learn? Uh, the school of hard knocks. I, I literally bought a machine and started doing it, which is not the way to do it, of course. But um, but I, uh, you know, of course, I, I met uh, a lot of the right guys at the right time. That right. And I came into tattooing at a time before. Honestly, before there was YouTube or MySpace even or Facebook or right. I mean, you, there, like now you can YouTube anything like, you know, how to tattoo or how do you do it? You know, you'll get a lot, a lot of stuff. It's crazy. Like my mom knows who Oliver Peck is, you know, what I mean? like, <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah. So, um, you know, it's a different world now, of course, with tattooing. But, you know, so absolutely. I, I, yeah, I got into it at a time when it wasn't as crazy. So. What's uh, what's a hot style right now? What are people asking for? I mean, there's always you know the classics. You know, people people want to lean towards you know, roses, skulls. You know, uh, there's waves. Uh, you know, I've been in it long enough that I've seen lots of waves of popularity of certain things kind of come and go. And is there something that you're happy the classics that's gone? Never die, huh? Is there something that you're happy that's gone? I mean, personally, uh, yeah. I, I mean, honestly, like somebody's coming to me and they, you know, they, they, they just want a good tattoo. And, right. You know, and I'm going to try to do that every time, regardless of what they want, you know. And um, of course, I always try to, you know, be helpful with the imagery and the art. And I always encourage them to let me draw it, you know. So, sure, sure. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, nowadays people are a lot more sophisticated they, with their uh, tattoo ideas and things like that. I think they have a bigger expectation. It's not just flash. No, not anymore, although uh, we still do custom flash. It's awesome, you know. I, I think flash has got a bad rap, you know, as long as it's custom done. I mean, it's supposed to be like you go to a tattoo shop, and each tattoo shop, the guys there painted the flash on the wall. Right. So you go to a different place, and there's always different stuff on the wall. Yeah, it's flash, and you're picking it off the wall, but it was still custom done by the artists mm-hmm. that work at that shop. And, that, you know, um, I, of course, want to try to get back to that a little bit, you know. Now, where do you now? I know obviously you're doing the illustrations for the band, and you have uh, probably a lot of the uh, the merch ideas in, in, as far as logos are concerned. Um, where'd you get some of those ideas from? Like, where do you draw from? I, I I'm curious because, like, you know, I, I it's either I hear music or I see a drawing, and I'm like, I I don't have any idea of how to even start that. I just I try drawing a circle, and I'm like, okay, that's about all I got. <laughs> well, I draw. I mean. I draw inspiration from a lot of different things, you know. I like, um, you know, uh, pre-Renaissance, like, kind of woodcut, you know, raw, you know, art. Um, uh, I definitely like 
a lot of impressionism and things like that. So I, I don't know. There's uh, different styles, you know, and I, I, I appreciate a lot of different stuff uh, as long as it comes from the heart, you know? Yeah. Um, so uh, as far as where I draw inspiration from the band, I mean, mm. I mean, I, I, I've, I've, we've, we've always kind of leaned towards, you know, occult imagery and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, the darker side of stuff is always a little more interesting. I think that um, it's also pretty synonymous with the scene and, you know what I mean? Like, it fits perfectly with what we're doing, you know? All right. And do you mind if we uh, start talking about the new music? Not at all, man. Not all right. <clears throat> so... Um, I've gotten to hear all of it, or as much as uh, you had given to me, and loving it. And I know, you know, I get it. I, uh, you know, I'm a friend of yours, and, and I'm close to it. But it still doesn't mean it's not great. You know, I love it to death. And uh, I know you had a problem before with uh, with the hard drive. What exactly happened? Uh, well, we've been working on this record. I think we started initially back in October. Uh, Whoa! <laughs> that's oh. a, yeah, that's not true. Of oh, 2017, <laughs> yeah. but um, but still, it was a very long time. We worked uh, really hard. It was uh, like I said, it was um, something that we decided to do on our own. Uh, I've been recording, um, you know, demos and the stuff that we do. Uh, you know, everything I've done with Jason. I mean, we used to spend in that house we were talking about. We spent hours recording stuff, and I, I mean, we've been through all the mediums. Right, you know, uh, four track mini discs, mm -hmm. you know, uh, everything, and uh, um, even and so we had everything stored on uh, on this drive, and back in uh, July, um, that hard drive failed. It was a really, Ugh. it was a really dark, uh, dark time. Um, we lost uh, a lot of what we've done, not everything, but we'd lost a lot, uh, and we had to start fresh. Mm. It, it set us way back, uh, way back to the beginning. But um, we believed in the material, and we were, we were determined to go ahead and, uh, and get, get started on it again, you know? We, we just had to... It was one of those things where you just had to... You just had to suck it up. You had to be... A, yeah, you had to bite the bullet. You had to get back on the horse, you right. know, all the stupid cliches you can think of. But, um, but we weren't going to give up on it. started going to school at Crass that, um, that the Wolfman and the Kid, like, used, I guess, their, their time as well and got a studio time to record these songs like because without those guys we wouldn't have been able to make this because we don't you know it's expensive to do that stuff we don't yeah any band that's recorded and stuff can know like how much goes into that you know and we've been really fortunate when to... it comes to like the business side of music we're not that great like we don't know a lot of people we don't know like a lot of studios like so the fact that we were able to record at the studio really is what made us uh, yeah, it was, enable us to make this. It was a it was a great opportunity for sure, and we took uh, you know full advantage of it as as well as we could, you know. And um, yeah, with like the hard drive stuff, I mean that kind of stuff. It just happens. What are you gonna do? You yeah, know, you, you just gotta like you say. You gotta suck it up. And we were just like, well, okay, what do we have to do then? Let's do it. You know, that's yeah. We were uh, determined to try to fix. The hard drive. I tried right. Some uh, some local folks and, and it ain't fucking cheap. And, and some national stuff. No, uh, the guys, the guy, the only guys who I found that said they might have a chance wanted. Uh, I think it was about two two thousand dollars. And you know what? I yep. told, I said, I said, do it. I said, if we can get back, you know, all this work that we did and we put into it, sure. All these great uh, takes and stuff that we love. That I mean, you can always do it again, but you can never completely recreate something you can even make it better you can even do it better again that's but the you positive, can never yeah. do the one thing you know and i mean that you did that one time right so uh and, and even they came back and they were like sorry keep your money we can't we can't do anything with it hmm. better in the end which i think turned out to be better yeah i think uh at the end we were all glad that we got a chance <laughs> to take another run at right. some of the tracks and uh and redo some 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 of the uh, some of the parts, so uh, it all worked out. It took a little bit longer than what we planned, and uh, cost us a little bit more personally than we right. thought it would. And I'm not talking financial; I'm just talking about your time and you know your effort sanity. and your passion, yeah. yeah, and your sanity. And it's and meant it, it it but it hurts mentally. <laughs> yeah, it does. Yeah, Stings the motivation yeah. yeah, but but it all all worked out, and we're really proud of uh, of what we've come up with and <clears> all the hard work that we put in behind it. So, with all these new tracks, is there a title yet for the album? <laughs> we do have a title, and is uh, it? we don't want to announce it. Uh, okay. Today, I'm like, only because we're going to be announcing it uh, this week on our Facebook and our Instagram. Fantastic. And there is something else that you gave me. Um, I don't even know if I want to say it. The PDF file. 
Uh-huh. No, please. That's a- that is called the, can I say it? Yeah, please. The Companion. Um, I think it's a brilliant piece. And um, I don't know who had the, the biggest hand in it. Um, it, it smells like JR. Uh, for, for, for lack of a better, um, but I love it. It's almost like um, it's a story. It's uh, has it seems like comic driven to, to an extent, but it it is by no means anything comical. Um, I, I I just wrote down uh, initially <clears throat> after hearing all the tracks, I said this is music for dark arts. I don't know why that even comes to my head, but you know, like I, as I listen to a song, I just jot down phrases or sayings. And um, that's what came up to me in in listening to this whole album, which a lot of a lot of the songs I've heard live. Uh, one of them, which I I will go down and tell you when I when we get to it, but uh, it's it's one of my faves, and it's such a different, it's such a departure from what you guys have been doing. So, uh, do you mind if I go through a few of the tracks, yeah. or are these are these right secrets? Out. No, we, we'd love to. Do <clears throat> yeah. Okay. No, um, I don't know if these are in order or not, so I'm just gonna I'm, I'm just gonna speak on them. Uh-huh. Curse. Yes. What can you tell me about it? Uh, curse is, um, you know, the first. Well, bef- you know, before getting into specifics, you know, every, each song has a, you know, I when I write lyrics and stuff, I'm, uh, you know, inspired by um, a little bit more of the story, something there, you know, uh, bands like The Sword, Uncle Acid, you know, that have these kind of concept. Uh, um, I've always liked that. And so, right. you know, matching the visuals, you know, with the song, I, I think it just gives you more. You get more out of it, you know. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and of course, that's just, you know, the piece of art that goes with it and stuff like that. It's just like an idea that mm-hmm. uh, I'm trying to just kind of put it out there and uh, let people kind of make their own sense of it, if they will. You know, okay. I leave a lot vague, I, I think. Um, for Curse... Right away, I put uh, dark, ready for the ritual, like just song of incantation, uh, ready for the mass to begin. Yeah, it's a darker song for sure. Curse, when I wrote it, I, I was kind of like, um, I think just having some, you know, simple turmoil with like a friend or something at the time. And I right. was just like, I'm going to write something specifically that's, uh, you know, geared towards a, I never really write about anger or anything like that, but I thought this would be like a good way to kind of put it out there and, a, you know, to ritualize that, uh, uh, so to speak, ritualize that feeling and, mm-hmm. and, and be rid of it after that, you know?
right, let's move on to the next track, Void of Form. Yeah, Void of Form is a... <laughs> we've been playing that one for a while, actually. You know, there's a, a few songs on here that we wrote uh, almost right after we uh, put out Order of the Goat. So we've been playing these right. songs for a while. Void of Form, um, it's just about a... like. It, it really, I was just inspired maybe by us four, you know, kind of pirating the you know, the galaxy, so to speak, and uh, le leaving behind some destruction, but, you know, I don't want to... Yeah, you can space, space pirate. pirate. Sure, why not? Yeah, space like, uh, it's... It's yeah. got a very spell jammer sort of theme. Right. Um, you know, it's like... I, <clears throat> this might sound kind of strange, but I don't, know if, I don't know if you guys would agree or not. So I love it when I hear a song, and especially the vocalist, when they are... To me, it feels like so into the vibe of the song that there's something on the side that it just kind of comes out naturally. I've heard you do it live. Um, I can, I, I'm terrible at recreating it, but there's something of that little, yeah, you know, like you're, <laughs> yeah. you just let it out. It's like, it's, sure. it's, 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 it's um, guttural and, you know, it's caveman, you know, like I'm, I'm feeling. And I heard that when Void of Form, just you vibing out and, and you, you had a, a, a brown, I don't know, gosh, 253 mark. Um, just that, that little bit of yelling in there. Oh, sure. And even the beginning, a little here we go kind of thing. And I just, I love hearing that because there's something that makes that feel so much more organic to me. Yeah, it's a pretty like, you know, it's one of our more, I don't know if you could even say aggressive songs, but it's a faster pace, you know, it really rocks, you know, we like... Um, so, and I think that was kind of the goal when we were writing it, you know, right. to kind of write something that was a little, you know, that's fuzz upbeat, heavy too. You know, just kind of give, a, yeah, give yeah. a little bit of richness to the whole record. You know, that there's a lot there. And for those two tracks, I also put, uh, for some reason, I'm, I was just envisioning these cloaked figures, like I said before, pre preparing for that's the ritual. Neat. That's awesome. And it, like, that's the whole point mm. is to, I, I can't wait to hear what people have to say about, you know that or you right. know what I mean I, I like hearing that because I like hearing your take on it it's really cool and that's really why you know I, I like having the visual with it you know people can kind of form their own absolutely what it's about you know now beforehand we play we uh we play this track uh wizard smoke <laughs> yes uh, what can you tell me about that I mean it's just straight up about weed and how it how it came to this planet <laughs> nice uh, I, I I just love the you know that's my take on how, how it maybe, you know, came here. And I, I didn't want to outwardly necessarily write a song about that, you know, but I thought it'd be an interesting way to kind of present, hey, it, it came from space and it's, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. And um, I, you know what, over the past, I don't know, however long you've been adding it to the set, I loved hearing the progression. I, that, that is one thing that, you know, I, I know some people, like we talked about, Maddie, you know, over in Sweden, he doesn't get to see you guys a lot. Or ever, right, except yeah. it's on video, you know. Uh, that, that, We've tried to send them as much as we can. <laughs> yeah, and you just, um, there's, there's just something about seeing it live, seeing that progression. It's almost like watching a comic, like uh, try, to, try to try some new bits and, um, you know, I'm going to add this word, I'm going to take this out, I'm going to add this. And it's, it's very similar with music. You know, you're taking this note, you're moving this over here, I should hit this uh, at a certain time, or what have you. And I just loved watching the progression of how that came around. And um, like I said before, I have this, um, this bad habit of when I hear that song, of always recording the end of it uh, yeah. for video. But uh, one, one thing that I thought was... I, I just always thought it was really great about the track. Um, just some of the minimalist parts. Um, it, I just loved it. I, I, you know, it's because it's, that's the one thing that I notice about a lot of your songs, and correct me if I'm wrong, it's just, there's a lot of changes. Um, it changes up quite a bit. You've got some breakdowns, and it's, it's, it's not always that straight chugga, 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 chugga. And, um, it's not always ethereal. It's not always one thing or another. There's just an amalgamation. It's such a, a huge, huge mix of stuff. I mean, I can only say that, like, it's because we write together. You know what I mean? Like, Matt will come up with, you know, the rad riff. Or, you right. know, we'll, we'll have an idea. We come together. We send a lot of, you know, 
recordings back and forth, like, oh, let's try this. And, and then when we finally, you know, bring it together, it just kind of, we all add our part. And, and I, you know, there was times where I'd tell Matt, like, you know, I had a total idea for this song, but as soon as Jason started playing the drums, it completely changed and it's awesome. You know, I didn't even think of doing it that way. So mm -hmm. I think that, you know, those changes can only be, you know, because we all influence the music in our own way, you know? And Jason, how'd you come up with the, the drum part for it? More jazzy or? For Wizard Smoke? Yeah. Yeah, just trying to keep it smooth. I think like a lot of our songs aren't overly technical. You know, I think it's more about um, the story and the vibe, you know. And that Wizard Smoke's like that. It's got that smooth, you know, that smooth transition there. Yeah. And, yeah, so it's just just kind of riding along, just trying to keep it flowing, you know. I always think of it as like kind of a, a flow. Yeah, and those ideas just kind of happen when we're, you know, writing. And, and we're like, oh, somebody will ring out longer, and we're like, oh, let's it'll keep that going. Or Jason will just sometimes go you know go left and we'll just try to follow and, and right. you know turns into something so i think that yeah when the, you hear the differences and stuff like that on the record it's because we collectively write together you know and um let's move on <clears throat> what can you tell me about white eye the white eye yeah, well, don't talk eye. about the white eye not white allowed. Speak. don't speak of the white eye yeah that's uh uh i spend a lot of time uh with uh with headphones on yeah, recording and mixing and stuff, uh, and I don't always get a chance to work as much on on writing as I'd like. Right. Um, even though I've, I've in the past I've written a number of, of songs for other projects, um, but this was one that I had written originally and brought to the group, and uh, they immediately latched on to. Right. Um, you know, it was intended with a you know to have that 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 hypnotic drony mm -hmm. uh, uh, a flush to it and, the, and these guys and that's exactly what I put I put like it's a it's very doomy it's real horror cult vibe mm -hmm. yeah these, these guys these guys definitely uh, fleshed it out we uh, use some um, uh, some interesting techniques I think when we're when we when we play it to sort of uh, boost up the sound like halfway through it and, right uh, it, I, it's one of, it's one of my favorite tracks that are on the new record. Cool. Um, I kind of, I kind of want to ask you what the white eye is, but I'm gonna let that lay. I'm not because I, I've made those mistakes. I'm not even talking about that anymore. About uh, not asking people about lyrics. Let's move forward to. Uh, well, I don't know. Was this, was this song done for you? I'm not sure. It's uh, Shadow. Was that, was that with you in mind or what? I just, ended up, just ended up in the shadow. Yeah, okay. with with Matt, like. You know, he comes with the rad riff, you know, and it just kind of yeah. let's play that shadow jam, you know. Let's and of course, when you know I go to write the lyrics, I'm inspired by the, you know, my my bandmates and stuff, and it's super fun to. And it just sort of grew around that name, right? The song kind of grew. From that. Well, because also um, shadow to me is like probably the most straight ahead rocking song. Um, I, I just put down, uh, like it's for me, I, I, I hot rod song, sure. motorcycles, yeah. uh, you know, just, but it's also, um, I, I don't know if this is if, as a piece of it, but it's you all being out, being at your show, everybody else being out, being a part of the scene. Um, I don't know if that's a piece of it, but that's, that's kind of what I got off of, off of listening to it and even some of the lyrics. Sure, yeah, there's, I mean, I'm definitely influenced by, you know, like we're, you know, we do all that, at, you know, in the evening time, and uh, most of the dark shit that happens, the fun stuff, or the, you know, it always happens after midnight, you know? My mom used to say nothing good happens after 2 a.m. Right, yeah, I've heard so, that too, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's yeah, where it is. Hours there. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. And, and you know what, honestly, um, I, I've, I've been outside of Yucca, as it's closing after 2 a.m. <laughs> doing good. doing a fucking interview, <laughs> nothing ever good happens out there. Great Shout out place. to Yucca yes. Tap Room. Love, uh, the yucca. Love the Yucca. There's several. There's several. It's either you go to the Circle K and see something bad, you look over in the parking lot. There's always something. But uh, all in fun and uh, oh, no, good people. And it's sure. all good, good people. people. Just uh, you know, it, it, it's just the beware of the night, I guess. Yeah. You know? Right. Okay. So. You guys played at the Rogue Bar in uh, Scottsdale, and I saw you do an open 
uh, opening track that to me I was like, why haven't I heard this before? Why I I can't wait to hear it again in that way. There's something I've noticed this a lot in the genre where um, you know I'm I, shit. I grew up in the '80s, so you know I I saw a lot of bands where they're like, please welcome Atlantic recording artists, blah blah blah, <laughs> and whatever. And for most bands in the genre, everybody just fucking starts. Yeah. So you know, and some people come out blasting and killing it and crushing, and that's I love it. But this was such. A radical departure. You came out to this like acoustic vibe, and I just loved it. I didn't even know. Uh, as I'm looking at my notes, I didn't even know what to write. All I wrote was "fuck, fuck, fuck." <laughs> I said, "Open with this again," and that is "Pillar of the Colossus." Yeah, named by uh, Ian. Um, you know, JR to play that song for about maybe a year. So, yeah, well, it took us a long time to finish it. It's uh, it's one of those songs that it, there's a lot to it. Yeah, and and therefore live, there's a lot that could go wrong. You know, and so there was this hesitation of it. And and to be honest with you, there was, you know, I'll, we've played a lot of the stuff from the new record live. You know, and that was one of the last songs, uh, with the exception of Dutchman, that um, we hadn't played live. And so. It, there was this maybe this uh, selfish want to cling on to this one song. It's that my personal heard, favorite you know? song on the record. Yeah, and it's a, I mean I love playing I mean, it. it you know, it's a it's a rad song. It's really fun to play, and um, but it, it it's dynamic. You know, we we there was many conversations to say the least about you know playing that. Jason was a big advocate for for, for playing song. it for sure. He was a big influence. So yeah, but we haven't played it since that show. Maybe, uh, <laughs> well, you know what? I don't know. I don't know if Wasteland is going to be the right space for that, yeah. but you do whatever you want. But I, I, I'm telling you, man, I loved the way, I love that open. And, you know, I know this is going to sound as, as cheesy as all hell, but like, okay, so I used to see in the 80s, you know, you've seen all the hair bands and glam bands and whatever. I saw Bon Jovi a bunch of times, and they open up with their, you know, give love a bad name or whatever, you know, whatever the fucking, whatever it is. Intro, yeah. <clears throat> Now get okay. Now get this. Okay, here's the thing. Fuck yeah, I saw them live one time. This was in uh, Middletown, New York. It was at Orange County Speedway, and uh, they didn't come out to a big blast, a big mm. pyro show, a big light extravaganza. He walked out with the acoustic guitar, sure, yeah. and started playing "Wanted Dead or Alive." Yeah, and the crowd was just crushed and un- unbelievably like. Hypnotized, sure. I believe. Like it that was. Song takes off too. Though, yeah, you know? it was. It was an experience, sure. and um, that's what I felt at the Rogue. And I hope that over time, um, wherever you're going to play, I hope that you will give that gift to the audiences somewhere because they deserve to see that live. Sure, yeah. um, I just, I, I can't say enough about that. I actually, I might. That might be a track I want to play. I'm, I'm not saying. I'm just saying. Uh, let's move forward to, yeah. You, you, you go. Think? Well, you go right ahead. You want to? It's, it's. I'm telling you, dude. It's. I. You know. It's. It's funny. I'm gonna. You know. In what? Are, what? Are, in. In wrestling, they call it break kayfabe. You know, where you where where they shoot, where they talk real, and it's like you know. I talk with some of you guys about like you know, what track do we put on? And it's like I you know fuck. I love Wizard Smoke. I've heard it a bunch of times, but. Pillar of the Colossus and 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 another track that's going to come up soon that we're going to talk about. They're just so different, and I love when somebody or a band goes outside their own box to um, to just uh, try something different. I'm, I just get thrilled with that. So. Thank you. 
Let's move forward to Ark. What can you tell me about Ark? So uh, Ark, 
I don't know. Again, one of those songs just kind of came together. You know, uh, I think I sent Maddie a riff, and we, you know, uh, that came together fairly easily. Uh, I really like those kind of fringe theory kind of stuff about the ancient world, and right. I took a lot of influence from that uh, for this record. Um, it's, you know, obviously there's no facts or anything. It's not science. It's, well, that's going to even call it pseudoscience is like almost a stretch but well, we'll just, but it's fun theories and I, and I really like uh, exploring those ideas and uh, so Ark is kind of like that uh, I mean um, and that goes into one of the next tracks um, also but uh, I wanted to say I, I, as, as I was hearing it I hate this plodding sound uh, like marching to the sacrifice um, but one thing I really like about Ark is it's breathing room sure you give it space to uh, just let everything soak in and I, I, that's one of my favorite parts about that track. It's just, it's not just, it's not a full throttle, it, but it's giving the listener time to like envelop. And, you know, I, I honestly, I haven't listened to this while I've been high yet. I haven't. And <laughs> oh, I can't man, fucking what? wait. Oh, I um, but I, I wanted to hear it huh? with. We got to stop. Wait. Yeah, I know. I know. I'm sorry. Okay, I, well, I highly apologize. recommend that you do that. Okay. No. For any of the listeners that listen to the record, it's going to only help the experience. And you know what? I'm gonna skip over one track because I want to. I want to talk about this next one because you just you brought up the idea of these these different uh, ancient things or or even like uh, I don't know if you want to say conspiracy. Yeah, sure. Um, Hollow Earth. Yes. Oh yeah, that's a pretty major. I think there's a lot of people out there that think about this and there's uh, my flat earthers and whatnot. I, okay, now here's the thing. <clears throat> I don't I understand. You can't have both. That we live in a world where you have that. You know, that you can have both. You can't. That you, there's like people out there that will <sighs> believe in both. You know, that they, hey, I think it's, it's a wonderful, you know, fun place to live in with that kind of weirdness going on. You can't have a flat earth and a hollow earth. It's sure, not allowed. Right. You got to have one or the other. It, yeah. The, but there's also the honeycomb earth too. No. That's another <laughs> thing. Yes. Explain honeycomb earth. The honeycomb earth is that there's, you know, it's not hollow, so to speak, but that there's these hollows just below the surface that, you know, are... You know, hot spring. Who knows? I, I, I really don't know. A lot Maybe of a that. nice spa. But this song is called Hollow Earth, not Honeycomb Earth. No, it's correct. not Honeycomb. So no, hollow, the Hollow Earth. Yeah, like you uh, didn't name it after no, a breakfast a, cereal. I mean, that, a, the, it goes way back. There's like an admiral, uh, Admiral Byrd. He was uh, took an expedition uh, to Antarctica and yes. wrote a diary. Yep. And um, it, the family still has it. It's under lock and key. He he died, but he said a lot of crazy thing, crazy things. But he was a pretty credible person. So I. I just think it's fun to even explore that possibility. Now, was any of the material, any of the lyrics or anything, was it based anything off of Dungeons & Dragons, Hollow Earth, or... Um, no, no um, not heavy- specifically, but of course, I mean, I, I'm, I'm fully, you know, influenced by that stuff, you know, I'm a child of the 80s. And- or have you ever heard of the Smoky God? The Smoky God, no. It's a, it, no. a, a, a <clears throat> literature that talks about it. Um, you know, here's the thing. So I, 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 th- I saw Hollow Earth. I looked it up. We've only drilled about seven plus miles into the Earth. Right, I think yeah, that's the Russians in Russia. Russia. Yeah, yeah. 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 And um, it's, it's quite a bit larger. So yeah, yeah, now, yeah, it's exponentially larger. Yeah. They, so what do you think? You think it's? You think the hole? You think there's a hole in the at the North Pole? Well, it's not what I think. But what, but what they think, yeah, is that there is an opening at. Maybe in Antarctica, maybe in the North Pole. Uh, yeah. Admiral Byrd said that they <clears throat> actually could fly from one pole to the next hmm. um, rather quickly, and that the technology was really scary, and that's what caused the expedition to. I mean, there's it's, the expedition's pretty well documented. You know, you can read it and stuff. But yeah, it's how uh, do you get in? I don't know. Apparently, there's a hole like there. an escalator. Or and something? some say that there's a sun in the center of the world. That, that there's actual stars. Like a mini sun. Isn't yeah, it? Is that the is that the one where it's like the um, mm-hmm. the the gray sun? Is that the one? I mean, I'm not. I, I don't know specifically the gray sun, but I know that they believe there's like a mini star in the middle, and and that that's what gives light. And you know, I thought of this you know land that the sun never goes down. And you just revolve around it, and it's like this you know. It's got to be difficult yeah. when you want to take a nap. For sure. You like, what do you do, blackout shades? Or, yeah. yeah. I don't know. What do you get? I guess you have to go to, like, Home Depot and get those For or something. sure. <laughs> yeah. All right. Moving forward, uh, The Dutchman. Oh, yeah. What can you tell me about that? 
Um, well, we're, I mean, we live in Arizona. It's a desert. Uh, uh, this is uh, local lore, so to speak. Uh, and mm-hmm. there's, uh, goes way back, but there is a, the Superstition Mountains that we see yes. from every point in this where we live. I mean, you, you just look, um, you know, to the east and there it is, looming, you know, like a big tower up there, like by itself. It's just really, there's something really magical about that, you know, living in the desert. And it's, right. it's an amazing place. You know? It, really it seems like there's several places around here. I know, like, uh, quite honestly, I've been here like about two years. I, I went to Tucson once for for like a few hours Mm -hmm. other than that i haven't been more than really an hour outside of my house oh man Uh, much like uh ian you know we don't we don't travel far but um you did tell me about jerome now isn't there some like hauntings in jerome or something oh yeah yeah there's a lot of uh uh ghost lore that surrounds uh, surrounds. They have the, like, the haunted hotel and stuff. Yeah, the, the hamburger joint. Ones, the haunted hamburger. Yeah, the haunted mention, hamburger. There's yeah. the Roosevelt Hotel, I believe, in <laughs> Payson. I think it's the Roosevelt Hotel in Payson or Flagstaff. I could be wrong. I'm sorry if I'm getting that wrong, but okay. I, I know that they have, yeah, like a haunted history there. And Chandler High School. Go ahead. I don't haunted. know this. Haunted. Yes, it goes way back. It was like one of the first high schools by an honor roll student. In that or? Area. I don't know. I couldn't tell you how, but I know that. I can, I can tell you I enjoy ghost lore as much as the next person, but uh, right. uh, I generally think less of people who tell me they've seen a ghost. Yeah, really? Too, actually, yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, I think so that's... So you never seen one? A ghost? No. No. Yeah. Neither, nobody has. No aberration? No nothing? Yeah. Like, that's something you got to, like, obviously experience, and I never have. It's just like if you told your buddy, hey, I saw a UFO last night, he'd be like, cool. No, you didn't. Come on. That's what he'd be thinking. I mean, that's what I'd be thinking, you know? So, okay, then it, what, uh, what it's, happened? You have to experience it, obviously. What know? happened out here with the Phoenix Lights? Oh, March 13th, 1997. I know it's my, it was my sister's birthday. I know it's close, I like, yeah, to the Ides it. of March, I and I, I heard I you're supposed it. to be aware yeah. of the Ides of March, so. I mean, it's, uh, it, it really happened. A lot of people, a lot of credible people, the governor, uh, Fife Simington at the time, he like, came out and made a joke about it, but then afterwards said, hey, no, I actually did see something. We were just trying to, right. you know, but, but I mean, a lot of people it saw it. I mean, there were so many, you know, you can't have, it's not nothing. I'll say that. It's right. not nothing. But you it know, could it, be something. It's, it definitely is something. So many people saw it. That's it. You know, I don't right. know what it was. I have no idea. You know, you can only speculate, of course. But And what was the, there was something that happened six, eight months ago where, I don't know if you saw it. I was in Old Town, I think, and there was this gigantic light above. And, it, and it, eventually somebody said, oh, it's just SpaceX. First off, I don't know what the hell SpaceX is. I, I, is that- but... I know I saw it, and I I was messaging with um, Derek from uh, Old Fashioned Assassin. He says, I saw it too. And it was almost like this giant, and I'm guessing it wasn't, but it was like this giant unidentified object that was just bringing light down. And, you know, there were people that I was told in Texas that saw it. So I don't know what the hell that could have possibly have been. Harp. But we do all know that Harp Derek from Old Fashioned Assassin is a well-known crackpot. <laughs> oh, oh, he is. Oh, he I wasn't aware of that. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you Loving so much right. for sharing that. I had no idea. <laughs> All right. So, is there anything else that you guys want to share about the album? Like, what track took the longest, and which was the quickest one to come around? Well, it was. Uh, it took a long time to get this record done, so we're just happy to get it out. Like, because we're already a few songs into the next record. Mm-hmm. You know, like we're. Because this one was kind of a, we got held up on the release. Uh, we're we're already at work on, on the the next one, so there'll be more recordings coming out soon. Okay. Yeah. And Matt, what what uh, what were some of the like the quickest uh, riffs that you came up with, and which one took you a little bit of time? And you're like, I'm not really sure about it. I would say. Pillar probably definitely took the longest because we had like a couple of different endings for that one. Yeah, it's not even that it went unfinished; it's that there were so many different. Yeah, finish and versions. we would play him. Like, oh no, we don't like that. We want to change it, or just whatever. But like Jr. said, like Arc was super quick. Even Shadow was pretty quick. I think that was the last song that we wrote for the record. 
like right at the very end. Like I think Wizard Smoke was like the first one. Like Wizard Smoke or Void of Form. Like the first couple songs that we came up with, those are pretty quick. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Curse was an older uh, riff that we had, and that that would sort of map, brought back to life. Uh, yeah, just forgot about that one. I think you sent like an an old recording of it or something. Yeah, we have a whole archive of. All, I mean, I would keep I keep pretty much everything we've ever recorded, uh, except for the stuff that failed on our drive. <laughs> but but yeah. uh, as but, well, you should. You know, it's like why not? You know. Record all the time. Yeah, no, we've we've, we've got tons of that stuff. Uh, something I, I I really want to uh, to 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 drive home about the um, uh, is that the companion that that it comes with. Right. Um, I really want to give a give people a good sense of what it is. Uh, the, it, it's basically you know going to be like a it's basically an ebook um, uh, that you can use to follow along. It's going to and and even the one that you've got is is a very stripped down version. As more right. content will be added to it and links. We've got some uh, channels that are probably going to be coming very shortly um, that are going to house uh, a lot of our videos. We do video flyers and those kinds of things. Absolutely. We, we spend a lot of time doing uh, for upcoming events and shows. But uh, JR really created something really special with these tarot cards, um, and we really wanted to uh, give something that you could follow along with and you could see the art and be like a marriage between the visual and the audio. And um, and that's why when you look at it, you'll see that the lyrics are laid out not in a typical fashion like you exactly would see in a lyric sheet. It's mid- laid out more like sort of a grimorium or a, uh, a you know some sort of a book or a story. And uh, and I think that that's really enhances the uh, the listening experience. And that's going to be available to everybody, uh, whether or not you you buy the record. Uh, really, yeah, absolutely. I, I thought it was fan- a fantastic idea. I love. Again, I love when somebody's just doing something that other people aren't doing. And and you just bring it. Now, that, that brings me to something that I wasn't even thinking about until you, you said it. So when all these bands come through, um, I actually wait. I wait to see your post because you post the video. And you always post a kick-ass video of the... Um, it's like a video flyer for the show. Like, where are you coming up with the ideas? Because they're they're just fantastic. And and, and let me let me just shout this out: any band that comes through here that puts Stone Witch on a bill, be honored and be thrilled to see that. Because I'm sure it takes a lot of work, and it, it's probably a labor of love. I mean, it's like you know, what are you getting out of it? I don't know, but um, I know when I when I repost it or, or or what have you, people love it, and they are like, you know, I'll get PM'd all the time, and they're like you know, how's he doing that? What is he doing? And blah, blah, blah. And so how'd you get started doing that? Uh, we used to do, uh, you know, um, a lot of video medium kind of stuff, uh, you know, back in, including me and my brother. And, um, right. so I've got some tools for, uh, for, for that kind of thing. And uh, it's just a fun way to let people know about the shows that are coming up. We, um, when it comes to our records and our album and, and everything, we, we, really strive to get 100% original art. I mean, we got a great artist like JR. Sure. Um, but these are more fun outlet where, you know, I mean, you notice a lot of them are old 80s horror movies. Yeah, you get to play and around. kinds of stuff. Maybe a movie you hadn't thought about in a long time. Right, right. Or uh, a weird scene. Uh, you know, I, I, I've done a bunch of them. Jason's done some. You know, we pull out a, a lot of that old Hammer, mm-hmm. Hammer stuff. And that's uh, just a fun way to keep people involved and, and let people know about the show. It looks cooler than, you know, than, than, than some other flyers, you know, that just have text on them way cooler and have you ever thought of uh like doing that as a side no i don't for like for just like bigger tours it's like hey i know i know you came i know you came through arizona you know if you want me to do something like this i can do this for for your tour that's an interesting thought but i do i do it for uh, i would never approach anybody about it but if somebody said hey i saw one of your flyers like if you guys would do something yeah that would be interesting that would be interesting but i do it for us because we love it and we have fun with it and right you know uh Putting them together, um, you know, we and then we send them back and forth, and uh, we got them pretty much all archived on our uh, our Facebook page and our Instagram. Okay, uh, you can see uh, sort of stripped down versions sometimes on the Instagram, but we try to keep them so that they fit in both mediums. Mm-hmm. But um, but definitely, uh, you know, be putting together a, a channel that's it's just going to strictly feature uh, the live or, or not the live, but the uh, the video flyers. Is that going to be on the Stonewall channel or? 
Yeah, yeah. So right now we don't currently have an official Stone Witch oh, uh, okay. YouTube channel of, of, right. of any kind, but we have a lot of video content, and uh, we hope to keep creating more. Speaking of, um, just a little side, but uh, I don't know what happened today, but I was going through my feed, and like every band and their brother was posting their Spotify results for the year. Oh, I Did you know. get yours yet? No, I didn't even know that was a thing. I mean, if, if you scroll, I'll I'll show you when when we're done. It's like everybody's posting, like you know, how many downloads or how many streams, you know, how many fans, et cetera, et cetera. And um, yeah, you know, the numbers are I want to know that. numbers are kind of impressive. Unfortunately, it's like is everybody getting paid from it? No, Pro- highly doubtful. Highly doubtful. And I see. I, I've I've heard that talk on multiple other podcasts and and uh, and um, oh who was it the uh, there was somebody oh Peter Frampton Peter Frampton that you know how many people listen to uh, you know what does it feel like I do you know whatever and it's like the amount of money that he got was just like dick just, yeah no a lot of these streaming services don't even they don't even make money you know? yeah yeah um, but who bought. Uh, um, Sirius just bought uh, Pandora, Pandora yeah. right? Well, yeah, I mean, I don't even know what's going to happen with Sirius. Like, I don't know. I mean, once, honestly, once Howard leaves, I don't know what's, what's going to happen to it. Uh, that's going to be the Benji channel. What do you mean? The fucking, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> it's going to be all Benji all It's going to be sh- the sweaty, sticky. All right, so before, okay, so here's the thing. So I was going to ask you a couple rapid fire questions. Um, but first, I have two other things. Uh, most importantly, I know you're a Stern fan. Is, are you a Stern fan too? Any, any, either of you Stern fans? You know it though. Um, that's we'll get to that in a sec. Um, <clears throat> I first want to ask uh, about your gear. Is there anything that you're particularly like you need to have with every show, or something that you're looking forward to getting, or anything? Well, I'll start off with with, with my head there. Yeah, um, which I acquired. From uh, sort of as a hand me down from some friends, that's a uh, that's a trainer YB three. Right. Uh, Peter Trainer created that uh, in Canada, and he's got a um, a special day. Okay, he's, he has his own holiday up there in Canada. Mm. There's an interesting there's an interesting video on YouTube where you can see him on his uh, his day, on Peter <laughs> Trainer day, and he took one of these up to the top roof of his shop, and he threw it off the top of the roof. And, of course, the tubes broke, but they immediately just threw in new tubes and plugged it in, and he started playing it. Those things are like tanks, man. I love that. Indestructible. Thing. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. So All right. I love that thing. Matt, what are you, what are you bringing on stage that, uh, that you need to have, or what's something you're looking to get? I mean, I'm looking to get all kinds of stuff. <laughs> but, uh, well, yeah, you, you seem more like, you seem kind of like the tech head. I mean, I guess I just have probably too much shit but well i know you got twice as many pedals right now well, yeah, <laughs> at least twice as many pedals yes yeah. way too many guitars okay um i mean the the amp that i use i got like a soft tech uh mig 60 head right so it's pretty awesome don't really see a whole lot of those i got like a bad cat 212 and then just like a some 412 <clears throat> cabinet is that what you usually bring on stage? Yeah, like JR and I, I both use 612s, like 212 cab and a 412 cab. Right. Well, I know what JR has. He's got a stack of it right here. Can you just chat about it for a sec? Uh, well, I mean, it's orange. I mean, you, uh, I, I, I think it's, there's two British amp makers and, uh, right. that, that everybody usually goes by, and orange is one of them, and I, I just, it's beautiful. It's just such a beautiful thing. It really is. It sounds it, awesome. You don't, I mean, if my pedal board goes out, it doesn't matter. I just play through the amp. Right. And it'll sound just as rad, you know? Mm-hmm. So it, it, um, I think that, yeah, I've just kind of gravitated towards that, you know? There you go. Yeah. And uh, Jason, is there anything uh, that you're looking to add towards your kit or? Yeah, I'm always looking for a bigger smoke machine. Ah, yes, yes. That yes. has a higher output. Yes. Okay. I, uh, um, I have an idea, and I'm gonna. I want to share it with you after uh, about how to uh, have better smoke. I have. I have a few ideas. Um, I'd love to hear. Yeah, it's gonna. It's gonna be very. It's very basic. It's very easy. It's very simple, and where the smoke won't dissipate. 
And that'd be great. Yeah. I mean, We've, taking, I've, hey, I'm gonna, technology to, yeah. I'm going to lay it the fuck down and you're just going to wow. be shocked. I might even, you know what? I might even put it just, just for other bands. I might even put it in the show notes. Yeah. I mean, I know, I know a lot of bands that could benefit from this knowledge. So let's not get crazy. And go right. this information. right. I mean, mm. yeah. You might, well, you know what? Yeah. Maybe we should test it. That, yeah, right. Get it, get a test at one of the shows, see how it works. And then maybe, you know, like, it, you know, like yeah. some people like just to do this, do the sabotage. Maybe I'll just give somebody like 80% of the idea. There you go. And like figure yeah. out the other 20%. Fucker. Then, yeah. We got to come 20. Yeah. Mm hmm. Okay, so before we go into the rapid fire, we, we really have to discuss the Stern Show because it's very fucking important. Um, okay, I have been on and off listening for years. I, I know my, uh, Jen, my girlfriend, hates me about it because I was an ONA fan for fucking years. It doesn't matter! It doesn't matter! Um, so I, I was a crazy ONA. I, I, I thought they were the best. Now, I, I liked ONA because they let the comics breathe. And at the time that I was listening to Howard, which was like, I stopped about 2010 or so, um, I felt like he was just having them on to like kind of make fun of him and not letting them breathe enough. Uh, you know, I heard some stuff that he was talking with um, Colin Quinn, and I understand whatever Colin Quinn did, he fucked a cat or something, I don't know. But whatever it was... Um, you know, it was just like, it was just... He did fucking care. Yeah, you know, I remember that, right? <laughs> okay, so in going... Let's just go with Stern, because I, I, I know you guys aren't ONA fans, but... The cat is online. The cat is online. <laughs> Does the cat like bananas? That's what I want to know. Okay, so I'm going to ask Ian and then Jason, give me uh, people, like, give me, like, a few people that you don't want to ever hear again on the, on the show, and give me some of the best content creators of the show. Dude, I'm getting a little burnt out on Mamet. I'll be honest with you. You're done with him? I'm just. I get burnt out. This shit goes on too long. Yeah, yeah. you know, like I I get it, right? But, but it just goes on too long. And gets played out. Uh, I, you know, I, I like hearing the uh, the cowboy stuff, but it's just it's, it just goes on too much. Uh, Ronnie. Uh, Ronnie's, Ronnie's the greatest content creator on that entire show. It is, but it's like after a while, I'm like, I fucking get it. It's almost like they're trying, they're like they're doing this. They're they're being overly filthy as, and he's the conduit. It's not. It's not only that. It's not only the sex tips and all the dirty stuff. Right. It's not only the hilarious, the the, the yeah, the, or the animal hospital he wants to up in Las dude. Vegas, right? Or the or the drops. Right. It's it's the arguments that when he gets into like with Ralph and people and right. he, and he always you can always rely on Ronnie to be Ronnie. He goes to his go to move, which is just to talk over everybody mm-hmm. and just filibuster. And it's it's the greatest thing if I've heard because because he'll he, all he does is repeat it back. Right. Right. And he'll, just give he'll say, you. He'll say You'll say, hey, 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 Ronnie, why, why are you such an asshole? Why, why am I such an asshole? Who, who the fuck are you? Yeah, right. I'm yeah. an asshole. Yeah, I'm an asshole. I'm the asshole. I'm, I'm the, the asshole. asshole. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Whatever. <laughs> whatever, dude. Dude. <laughs> and, or it's either that or what the fuck are you talking about? Right, right. I miss the block party days, man, when yeah. they had them on all the time, and the stuff with the uh, with the head swap. Oh, Head swap, yeah, yeah, where he was using Dean Kane's body. Oh yes, oh yeah, that's hilarious. That he was using. I mean, that's awesome. Whose body was that? It was Dean Kane, the guy who played like Superman on like TV <laughs> so like twenty years ago. And then Howard rips into him, and Howard totally used a fake body on the front of that private bar. Oh, absolutely. But nobody called him out on it. It's it's the best. So what? Um, who in? Because I know you know Ronnie's regular show, but we got some whack packers. Who in the whack pack are you done with? Who would you like to see make a return? Fuck Bobo. Fuck Bobo, fuck yeah. Bobo dude. Yeah, fuck, Bobo, yeah. fuck Bobo and fuck Jeff the Drunk. Jeff the Boar. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I can't yeah. see him. Yeah, he's, he's the worst. Wendy's always solid fucking gold. And it'll never be the same. Eric the Midget Days will never come back. Oh. You know, oh. but but dude, I mean, I mean, that was just the greatest. Derek from Texas was probably <laughs> one of the funniest bits to happen on that show he's of all of time. Remember when he's afraid dude, the of werewolf werewolves? thing? Yeah, yes. it was in his rider for when he was doing. Uh, was he was like, doing uh, like like plain uh, plain sight or whatever the name of that show was. And he never got his Pepsi. I love. I'm see, now. I, I know this. This is going to be controversial. I'm not going to call him ETM. I'm going ETA. All right, all right. Because he, he, look, he, he acted. That's what he wanted. And um, I, respect it. I tell you, though, I, I don't think I ever laughed harder when, uh, when he, he makes this call to uh, Johnny, Johnny Frado. Mm. And, uh, uh, 
you know what to do. And I was oh, yeah. like, holy yeah. shit. Yeah. <laughs> Are you putting out a hit, like, on someone's life? Like, what is that? Yeah. That yeah, oh, so Classic. fucking brilliant. Yeah, Classic. He was classic. the best. He was the best. There'll never be another one. Bye for now. He was, yeah. supposed, to, he was right. supposed to die Bye when he was, like, nine years old or something like that. Well, it's either him and, I mean, uh, look, dude, I, I remember, uh, I was so-so for a while with Hank, but when he... When they found what his niche was, trivia. which was the 70s rock and, roll tri- trivia. rock and roll trivia, I mean, it was like a blast. The guy was falling off the fucking thing. He's nodding off, and he still provided the answer. Yeah, he just wake up and be like, get Lee from Rush. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then he goes back, and then he just falls back over. <laughs> so um, let, me, let me run through a few. What do you think? Uh, Crazy Alice? Uh, half red. Uh, half red. <laughs> half red. Fuck you. Fuck yeah. you. Fuck you. Yeah, it's a, it's a it's a one note, but as, I don't I don't think they overuse it, so it's good. Okay. Um. You know, I haven't heard of. I was I was I was talking about it earlier. Uh, Double A. Double A. Yeah. Jeez. Oh man. Where's he been? Yeah. I don't know. I think he's on that band list. You that, think? Yeah. I think Marcy Turk banned him from. Yeah. Who else? <laughs> um. From coming on the train. Well, you know, uh, Gilbert. Gilbert. Has yeah, Gilbert been on the that, fucking show? Yeah, they say that about Gilbert. They say he's banned as well. And I know there's a there's a few others. Uh, that's what that that's what they say. Like you know, there's those, the ex stern guys who you know Artie and uh, Stuttering John and all those yep, guys yep, who yep. are always exposing Howard. Yep. And uh, I saw Artie just went into rehab. Yeah, uh, well, you know, yeah, big shock. I mean, yeah, he's got demons. But the um, uh, there was um, oh gosh, who else was I thinking of? It wasn't uh, well. Any of this? I mean, John the Stutter. Eh, I could deal. I could take her leave. Um, who else? Who, who am I missing here? Who is it? The sour shoes. So, oh he, mean, no! There is no one better than Sour Shoes. He is the king. Do you? Now, how long have you guys been listening? A long time. I mean, do you? Yeah. yeah. Do you remember ninety-eight point five? Ninety-eight Feinberg. I don't, I don't know. He was like a, a, I guess, a Jewish hip-hop rapper guy. Oh, yeah. yeah, it was just weird shit. Mm-hmm. All right, either way, I, I just had to get some of Stern uh, off my chest because uh, I've been a fan since, like, the mid-'80s, so uh, I just had to see what other people were thinking. No, I think the show is just as good as it's ever been. I know it's changed and it's evolved, and everybody it, wants to shit. It has changed, but revolves, it's but like anything it's else. It's a great show. We discussed it earlier. It's like you fucking evolve. You're going to have a 60-plus-year-old guy, you know, staring at 20-year-old tits? I mean, it's like... Yeah, I guess you could, but, you know, it's like, it gets fucking old. That's Angry something? Alice, dude. You know what I mean? You can't have Angry Alice on every day because she's only got one thing to do. True, true, true. So I have a few uh, quick questions. If anybody wants to answer, you can. Uh, are we ready? Yeah. Favorite show of the year that you saw? Music. Anybody? Go ahead. What do you got? Wait, wait who is it? Winhand. Yeah, Winhand. Yeah. Um, now, I know, I remember, <laughs> it was so funny. What's that? It's funny. I remember, I saw Matt at the show. When, uh, was Conan this year? Or was that last year? When Conan, when is it, Yucca? Yeah, I think it's probably the beginning of this year. Now, I can never, I mean, Matt, you know, I, lo- I love you to death. I can never imagine you being in a pit and to see you. <laughs> To see you well, on the side. And you like told this me this like, before, but I still don't know even know what you're talking about. I, that was a that was a good size, a decent pit at Conan. But I wasn't in it though. You, I saw you. I saw you moving around. I saw you dancing. Yeah, that was probably it. Easy. Yeah. I was standing like right behind you for most of the show. I think. Yeah. I remember seeing you. I was, I was like, uh, "Is he? Yeah, you're, you're, he's okay. He's fine." Yeah, they were awesome though. Okay, so Windhand, Conan. If it was this year, any other bands? Anything? Sleep was pretty good. Sleep was great. Eagles of Death Metal. How was it? They're so fun. Yeah. They're great, man. Satan was really good too when they played with Winhan. Yeah. What? What is it? What, uh, so they have that vibe, but they they almost have this like I almost feel like I'm hearing like a little bit of '80s in in their sound. You feel that? Yeah, or? kind of. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So as far as the band is concerned, what's the strangest compliment that you have heard? Regarding your band, uh, I've been referred to as a smoked out Steve Perry, which I thought was very apt. Apt. I like that. Uh, that's 
it was a good description, actually. I liked it. So maybe a will it, will it doom of a, a journey track, possibly. <laughs> no. no? <laughs> Sorry, journey's not doomed. They're not doomed, but I mean, there's got to be something in, that, in, the, in the 70s uh, albums that they put out. Yeah. All right. All right. Anybody else had a, a strange compliment or something that you're you're not expecting? All right. Move forward. Influences. Who are your influences uh, from early on or even currently? Yeah. He's gone. No, no. Do you know what? Do you, who do you? Who is it, Matt? Who's my influence? Yeah. Go ahead. I mean, all kinds of influences. Uh, like dead metal is a really big influence for me. Okay. Um, Sleep and Electric Wizard, you know, like Doom. Mm -hmm. I like uh, like Pentagram. I like a lot of that old stuff a lot. Sure, sure. Just yeah, all those guitar. Blue, dudes. yes, yeah, Blue, Blue Cheer. Cheer, solid Coven. Absolutely. Yeah, Coven. Um, drink of choice. Now, talk to you. You don't. You're not really much of a drinker, Jr. But you get a little whiskey here and there. Anybody else have a specific drink of choice? I know there's that the Winter Ale. It's pretty fucking, yeah, I mean, pretty solid. Yeah. Gin and tonic. A little gin and tonic. That works for you. And now herb of choice. We got uh, sativa or what? Sativa. Sativa, sativa for sure. Yeah. yeah. Indica. Indica. Oh, this motherfucker. That's not right. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah. What about yourself, Manny? I mean, sativa's fine. Either one. I don't care. Yeah, whatever it is. As yeah. long as smoke comes out, we're good. Yeah. yeah. And what about yourself, Ian? You got anything? Oh, I wouldn't know the difference, but uh, oh. <laughs> there's, there's the good shit and the bad shit. Yeah, there's the dirt weed and the st yeah, right. stems and uh, all that shit and the bought, shake. Bought some white weed one time. It was the worst thing I ever had. White weed? Yeah. What, what, what did it do? Just play something. like I'm Barry saying. Manilow or something yeah. like that? <laughs> I'm, just saying, I'm just saying. There's good stuff and bad stuff. Okay. Uh, the last great movie that you saw, what was it? Oh, the witch. witch. Yeah, I just, okay. Uh, witch. Just put that on Netflix recently, and I just saw it. Black it Black theater. Samson, wasn't it? What? Black Philip. Black Philip. Yeah, I always yeah. get that wrong, but oh Black my Phillip. god, it's such a great movie. You know what's what's crazy? Just unexpected. And Explain Black Philip. So Black Philip is the family goat. Yeah, and the spoiler alerts for anybody who's listening. No, I mean, well, I'm not giving anything. No, let it out, man. That. Fuck them if they haven't seen it. Black Philip is the name of the goat that the family owns. You okay, know, but this family is, and they've been cast out of a community, and it kind of takes place in the uh, what the early 50s, yeah, yeah, 1600s, uh, right? Like the Puritans and stuff like that. And this family gets cast out into the wilderness, you know, and they okay. have to survive out there. And you, 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 you know, it's in the craze yeah. era of the witch and the, uh, you know, the that that kind of uh, vibe. But yeah, and you kind of get the feeling that uh, you know it's all in their head, but. You know, you have to see the film. It's really great. It's really are, are any of you familiar with Patrice O'Neill? No, not. He was a comic. Uh, he passed a few years ago. Phenomenal comic. And he actually had a show on XM, and it was called Black Phillip. Oh, really? Yeah. And it, I, I actually... I don't think it's related. Uh, probably yeah. not. Uh, I, I, you know, I got to admit, I downloaded them because it's just great material. He just talks the realest of any human being that I've ever, ever heard. And if, you ever, if anybody gets a chance, find out, uh, find Black Phillip show from Patrice O'Neill. You won't be disappointed if you just want to laugh your ass off. Uh, new music. What's everybody listening to? Some, some new stuff. Um, I really like All Them Witches' new record. Um, right. It, uh, I'm, still, I'm still rocking that Sleep record that came out. Oh, oh, yeah. The Science is incredible. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I think that's one of my top ten of the year. Again, I love that. So good, man. Yeah, Maddie, what about yourself? What do you listen to? Uh, for new stuff, I don't even know. Um, you st you mostly stick with the classics. I mean, not even just the classics. Just the same stuff that I've just always listened to. Right, right. Mostly, yeah. Uh, okay. Oh yeah, Uncle Acid just came out with a new record. All right, right on. Um, okay, and. Um, if you go around uh, to each other, um, number one, who this was this is actually something that, that Jen had a question about. Um, number one, who has the best dance moves in the band? Yeah. Ian does. Ian has the best dance moves. Is everybody agreeing on that? 
So Jason agrees. Matt, do you agree with that statement, or do you think you got you can cut a rug a little better? Yeah, I think Ian's got it. Ian's got it. Okay, Jr., you're agreeing with this? Oh, for sure. I mean, that's why we put him front and center. You know, okay, you, had, you, you put the. He put the money, the money right out front. Those are the money. He's beats. the true money shot right the, there. The hot meal, so to speak. The yeah. hot meal. It gets the people nice. to be like, oh, yeah, I do want to listen to this band. Holy put, shit. Puts asses in the seats. Hold I get it. Second. Yeah. Right. Okay, now here's, here's the second part to that question. So since Ian is the best dancer and he's got the hot moves, uh, any chance that you're going to be cutting a rug here and putting it on Instagram? There's none whatsoever, Chris. But thank you for asking. There's there's not going to be any chance when because um, I, I like I think um, uh, this was a while ago. Duel came over with uh, the band Wizard and a lead singer Duel, which I apologize, my mind escaping me right now. Um, he has this little shuffle, like almost like a Texas shuffle. Is there any chance that you're going to incorporate that into another Doom Tomb, uh, uh, excuse me, Stone Witch performance? It's uh, you know you got to feel it. You know, you got to feel it. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. If I feel it, it'll it'll come out. Do you, do you feel it? Um, it? It's it's in the footwear or like what makes it? What makes a good a good shuffle? No, it's all in the hips, man. It's all in the hips. It's all in the hips. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. All right. So, does anybody have uh, any of you? And, if I, and by the way, I want to thank you all for giving me so much of your time. Oh, um, thank you. And do you and have um, real quick yeah. though, Chris? Yeah. We do have to. Add, we do have to say. Oh yes. This guy is at every show. Is we like we. Yeah, I mean he's interviewing all. I mean just promoting every band that he comes across. Uh, if you guys see this guy at a show, go up to him, say hi. Uh, uh, you know, introduce yourself, thank him because he does a lot. You know, to get a, a lot of really amazing bands heard. Um, and and he's, he's just done, and he's done a lot for our band. Oh, I, I mean, super selfless like, for sure. I mean, I would imagine people probably thought you were in our band, right? For a while, that's not... <laughs> if you look at me... Chris yeah, is you're always the, you're willing the fifth, to say something nice about us to anybody yeah, who listens. Yeah. Like, <clears throat> I've said multiple times that every band needs a guy like you in their corner. You know, like, because every band really needs, like, somebody that's not in your band to, to help you. you For know? sure. And, and to, like, motivate you and want to, you know... That's awesome, dude. Yeah. We do a lot of so, for us. thank you. We're yeah, from us, for sure. We talk mm-hmm. about how awesome you are all the time. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Except for <laughs> Matt. He says you're a dick sometimes, and I'm like... I, I get that. I mean... I tell him he's got you all wrong. Right. That's what I said. <laughs> I don't care what Matt says about you. We, you know. And, and Matt, he's his own... <laughs> look, he's... he's um. Like, you know who does a lot of nice stuff for us? Chris. And he's like, sometimes, but most of the time, he's a dick. What he's, has he done it, for the me thing, lately? The thing with Matt is, is he like, he's so tough to tame. Um, you know, actually, it's funny, because Winger did a song about that, about Sorry, being too tough did. to tame. Uh, no, I think it was Madeline. She's yeah, can we fucking talk about that for a second? Yeah, like, he's, come on. How he's old like, is that dude, he's fucking, right? Like, he's come in on, his, bro. Like, he's in 30s. He's, like, in his 30s. He's singing about a 17-year-old. Can we just call, like, statutory? Oh, I mean, yeah. did we fucking miss out on this? Yeah, Chris Chris Hansen's going to come out on stage and yeah, be like, uh, why don't you have a seat? Yeah, why don't Let's you talk have about a seat? this song, 17. Like, no, 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 <laughs> you don't understand. I have... Uh, heading for a heartbreak coming up and yeah sure no sure, no, sure. no 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 sure sure yeah, you no. just sit down at but yeah the... you're here right yeah, now yeah. with a 17 year old girl 17 <laughs> you know and it, it it's kind of funny that you even bring that up because when i was a kid that 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 song came out uh except i one of my great friends this guy dennis um we changed it to 217 because it was her weight like just when we, <laughs> like just when we thought we could fit her a, through a, the door, woman, yeah. she gained twenty pounds and nice. she fell right through the that floor. Deuce, you know, she's only two seventeen. People say she's too she's fat, but she's thin though. enough for me. Hey, hey. Uh, she's only two seventeen. That's what it is. <laughs> so, um, guys, do you have any questions for me to ask the next band? I mean, I, I, I I've been slacking on this, but if you got a question for some other band, I, I'd love to hear it. Uh, I don't know if that means original. I would I would ask uh, another songwriter, uh, specifically Doom bands. You know, like, right? Do you listen to Doom music when you're writing new material, or do you listen to something else? Are you inspired by other things? That's perfect. That's perfect because you even hear uh, you hear comics that they can't listen to comics or other and go to other shows because you'll get that odd inspiration. And yeah. Like, like oh, you, that's a lick. That, it just you know, happens. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. there's a magic to a riff or something and you're playing it and you're like, 
I don't know, it kind of fucking sounds like something I've heard, and I don't know what it is, but, you know. Um, I'll, give you an, I'll give you an alternate. I'll give yeah. you a little second there so you can, you can, you can cut it if you want. Climbs I'm a bloopers and follies guy myself, hmm. so I would be interested to hear any, any of, of, about, you know, it's a, maybe, a, maybe a mishap. On oh, yeah, stage, sure. right, 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 or, or maybe in the recording studio. You know, you don't have to call anybody out, but stuff goes wrong technically. Shit does sure. go wrong. Yeah, oh, and hey, that. it's always a good story. After <laughs> sure. it's always a good story. We uh, have a fire alarm. So that's hey, please, uh, Matt. Do you have any other, any questions that you need to? Any pressing ideas or comments? A suggestion? I'm just gonna have my hands held in between my legs and be all be all gauche. He, I got nothing. Jason has a couple of questions. Oh, Jason has questions? I didn't know that. All right, go ahead. Jason, you got something for us? There, there's a lot of questions. I know, I'm, I'm sure you have plenty. Is there anything that you want to ask the next band? Yeah, have they heard that uh, old-fashioned assassin record? Fuck yeah, Blades on the Wave. <laughs> Fucking good record, right? I, I want to record where they recorded it. Uh, I, I think that I thought that sounded good. I isn't that I Joe? Derek, isn't that Joe? I don't know. I, I think I that's Joe uh, Switchblade. I think Derek said he was gonna like introduce me. Absolutely. But once again, like Ian pointed he, out earlier, he's Joe's at the shows. Show. I'll have to I'll have to link him in the show notes too. Maybe maybe we'll give a shout. He out. plays in a band, right? I believe so. Yeah, yeah. I saw him. Um, Do you know anybody? In I saw him at Guts? Tempe Tavern. Do you know Scattered Guts? I do know Scattered Guts. I was driving to... I just saw Scattered Guts uh, Saturday. We were playing a show, speaking of serious. Right. And I was driving to the show, and I was listening to... Um, what's the metal trivia show? It's on uh, XL Metal, that station. Um, I don't know. Dude. Is, uh, is uh, what's him called doing it? Uh, Jose? <sighs> Jose, yes. Jose thank Mangan you. does yes, it? Yes, thank yeah. you. So, so in, 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 it's, I fucking love that show. I right. I fucking love it. And so it was on as I was driving to the show, and one of the guy from Scattered Guts was on. No shit. Yeah, I think he missed a Pantera question or something. It was pretty weak. but That's not good. But I was super excited because I was like, oh, my God, he's from here. And speaking of, did any, were any of you at the uh, Phil Anselmo show? No, but um, <sighs> I was unaware that uh, the, the entire tour was uh, Pantera's tribute. I thought that he was did. He did in LA. He did maybe three, four songs that were the illegals, and then a huge tribute. I mean, Mouth for War, Broken, Walk. Yeah, I saw that they uh, yeah. did that in Los Angeles, like the, the morning of, because they must have played in LA yep. before they came to Phoenix. Yep. And uh, and it was like, oh, they played all these Pantera songs. This right. Pantera set. Yep, and I was like, pretty much. awesome. And then I knew they were playing here that night, but I just thought that was like a special thing. I didn't realize that, that was how it's, that's awesome. It was insane. I just put some stuff up on social. Um, the pit was just crazy sick, and uh, it, was just, it, was, it was just a fucking blast. So, guys, thank you so much for this extended, extended, extended interview. Uh, <laughs> love you guys to death. Thank you so much for having me in this space, in this area. And, uh, you know, I can't wait for the, the response from people when they hear this new material. Cause, um, as, uh, I, which I never, I didn't really use this word a lot until coming out here as, as Ian would tell me that was fucking rad. <laughs> so thank you. Uh, not, not so much. What do we, what do we do? We, do we do a for sure? No, I tell you. Okay. So I came from New York, and then I came down to Florida, and I went back up to New York, and I said, uh, so, you, so what are you all doing tonight? And they said, pardon? What what'd you just say? I said, what are, you, what, are y'all, what are y'all doing tonight? And I said, what's with the y'all? I said, oh, I, don't, I don't know. Like, I caught, I caught you all down there. I also, I mean, there's also some other weird shit. Like, I also ate Scrapple for the first time down there. Never had Scrapple before. It's, heard it's of Scrapple. Okay, picture, um, picture like spam, right? Okay, yeah. probably Can't worse, for, worse for you. Okay. It's scrapple comes from scraps, oh, so it's nice. like I don't Entrails know lips, and hooves, and assholes. Lip I don't know whatever it is. It's just all put together, yeah. and it's like a block of meat, 
Delicious. And you, you, oh yeah, you cut it like bread. Fry it, really? Oh yeah, it's like, oh, a, yeah, it's like a nice sausage. Yeah, it, the, it the most can't... disgusting sounding shit is probably the, Dude, the shit that's so awesome. The, uh, like obituary and the, the metal scene, that Florida. Oh yeah. Oh, I, I was down there in 92, so you'd see Cannibal coming around, Morbid Angel. Oh, everything was that, 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 death, fucking death. I mean, you, yeah, now death was, I mean, you know, rest in peace, Chuck, but death was actually, actually the absolute first death metal band that I ever got into. Uh, I remember it distinctly. I was driving home with this guy, uh, his name was Heath, um, and he, it's fine. He had a driver's side. He had a driver's seat and have a passenger seat. So I'm basically laying down in nothing. And he, and he pretty much. And so I, I, I gave him this cassette and he's like, what is this? I said, it's death. It's uh, scream bloody gore. He said, I've never heard of it. I said, put this shit in. He put in and it was uh, the first song he heard was regurgitated guts. And he's like, oh my God, what is this? I said, I, I don't know yet, but I know I got to hear more of it. Yeah. And then moving down to Florida, yeah, man. Oh, God, what a great band. Did you see that death documentary that just came out? I haven't Earlier seen it yet. when you were talking about the death, the black death. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought you were ta- talking about the, this death. What's the name of this one? Because the, the other one, I think, was I called it, a band it. called Death. I think that was no, the name no, of but, but somebody made a, yeah. But somebody made a death documentary. That just came out this year, I think. I didn't see I, it. I just got it. It's, dude, it's awesome. Is it on Netflix? No. Hmm. It's, uh, I'll have to look it up. Yeah, it's amazing. Thank well, you Amazon, thank you, Chuck, for all that you've done with, for tech metal. And even, gosh, I mean, even some of the bands that I've seen coming around here. The musicians that that guy played with. And um, unbelievable. Sean Reithart, like, never makes me want to play drums ever again. <laughs> you know, like, he's so good. But, yeah, um, all right. I think we're done. You want to call it? I feel it. It's done. All right. So what will you cut out, do you think? What will I cut out? Well, I I mean, it's kind of obvious. Obviously, every time this fucking Matt talks. We talked for so long. (laughs) He's he's, the the thing is, the thing that kills me, he's just so fucking wordy. If he would just like, just cut it down, make it succinct. I, well, I think I think I think I can speak speak for us all when I when I say it. Don't. Yeah, whatever you cut is good. Yeah, yeah. Cut a lot. (laughs) Cut a lot of shit. We'll cut some stuff. Take a lot. All right. Thanks, guys. Love you to death. Love you, Chris. Thanks. We'll talk to you. Thank you. Later. Thanks to the guys in Stonewich, Jason, Ian, Matt, JR, all of you. Really appreciate the talk. Had a great time. Uh, thanks for introducing me to some new beer. And uh, you know what? I think we we really covered everything from uh, Desert Oracle. So when it comes out, you know, I'll probably be posting something on social media. I know they will. Check it out. It's going to be out in the beginning of next year. Um, you've heard some of the tracks. Uh, you know, hey, leave leave us a line or leave them a line. Tell them what you think. You can reach us always, you know, doomtoompodcast at gmail.com and on social media at doomtoompodcast. I usually say that at the end, but I figured to throw it out now. Throw out, an, uh, yeah, if you get a chance, an iTunes review. That'd be awesome, too. Uh, you know what? This, this reminds me. Uh, a few weeks ago, I saw the band Red Mesa. This was the song that they closed with. I love it. It's, uh, it's a Pink Floyd, like, best of. And they did their version of the song Breathe. Check this out.
So this is kind of a first. I don't have any interviews in the can right now. And as I'm looking down, for some reason, my dog is going crazy and uh, he's licking me to death. I don't know what is up with him right now. Probably has to go out. All right. So I'll be taking him out soon. Uh, But before that, uh, you know, just saying, I don't have anything in the can right now. I don't have any other interviews. I have to book up some. Um, just trying to get appointments down with people. I think if I don't have a, uh, an interview for next week, I think I'm going to do a year in review, or I just might do one anyway. A lot of stuff went down this year, and it was a great year. Thank you to everybody that helped, everybody that contributed, um, whether it's band submissions or just thoughts or ideas. It's all welcomed, and I thank you all so much. Enjoy yourselves. Keep going to the shows. Buy some band merch every once in a while. And uh, what's that? Um, Oh, yeah. Don't forget to stay heavy.
Well, there's a quote that uh, Dio told to Dave Mustaine one time, and it was, well, you know, we can jerk each other off all day, or we can smoke this joint. <laughs>